Yes, keep a trading log. I've got my own little custom trading logs. But you don't need the snap where you got in, where you got out, what time, all that kind of stuff. Your broker can give you all that. The key to my trading logs are, okay, what was I feeling when I took this trade? At the moment I'm executing this trade, just be aware of your feelings. Don't analyze it, just be aware of it. Number two, be aware of your thoughts. So, for example, going back to the earlier illustration I gave of people in the trading room, I learned that if my self-talk is saying, this market can't go any higher, I'm wrong. As soon as I notice my brain self-talk saying the words, this can't go any higher, that would make me want to go short because I think it's overbought and the term overbought even implies it can't go any higher. And that is, it couldn't be more wrong. The odds are the market will go higher if I'm saying that. So you keep track of this. You keep track of what you're thinking, what your thoughts are on every trade. And I started to see, you know, just give me one example. I started to see that pattern. Like 90% of the time when I was thinking, well, this can't go any higher, it did go higher. So then I can use that information later and because I, I was somewhat aware of it. I had a general awareness that, yeah, this is happening. But until I put it in writing every single time, and then I looked at the data at the end of the week and at the end of the month, and I realized, wait a minute, I had this self-talk that the market can't go any higher 60 times. And out of that, 58 times, it did go higher. And I went short. I had an awareness that I was doing it, but I didn't realize it was that bad. And so now, so we've got a whole list of rules that I've created and working with traders in the top 20 most common mistakes that traders make. That's just one example. And so I give this list to people and I say, every trader is different, but here are the most common ones. See which ones you struggle with. Log every single trade, what you're thinking, what you're feeling, what mistake you made. And then at the end of every week, accumulate those numbers and see what your unique mistakes are that you are habitually going back to the word habit, habitually doing that maybe you weren't fully aware of, you just had this kind of vague awareness of. And now we're gonna use this piece of paper as a mirror. And this mirror is going to show you, here's the truth. This is what you are actually doing. This is your behavior and it's worse than you thought. Again, needing that outside influence, like we talked about the athletes need that from their coaches. Well, this is your outside influence saying, yeah, here's, here's the facts. This is your tape of your game. And what's cool is I've done this with traders in my own office face to face. We do this for weeks and weeks, weeks. And at the end of the month, we line up in one column, how much money they made or lost. And then the other column, how much money they would have made or lost if they would not have made those habitual mistakes that are most common to them. And I would say in about 90% of the cases, if they just stopped making those mistakes, they're already a profitable trader today. It's so fun for me to look over, to show that to them, and I look at their face, and there's such a sense of satisfaction. When I see that awareness come over their face, it's like, oh my gosh, I'm already a profitable trader? And I said, you are. You don't need to get any more gurus. You don't need any more moving averages. You don't need any you know, fancy schmancy stuff. All you need to do, you need to do less, actually. Not more, you need to do less, and the less is, cut out all these mistakes you're making. These are all amateur mistakes. These are the things that the herd does and it's gonna feel a little uncomfortable, but you know what? Feels more uncomfortable to me, losing money. I'm really uncomfortable losing money. I don't know about you, but here's the facts now. Let's work on that. And then when I ask the traders, for example, do you remember your last five or 10 trades? Uh, then they already struggle quite a bit. Yeah. So if you don't even remember your last five trades, then it's very hard to learn from, from that. And very often um, I saw that when I started journaling, there was, I was not doing everything completely wrong, but there were certain mistakes I kept repeating, kept repeating. Like the one big thing for me was that I was always widening my stop loss in the beginning. Would I just stop this one thing, then my performance would already change quite a bit. So then uh, that's what's quite a big revelation where I always thought maybe my, my strategy is not working, but I did not have any proof that or a way of proving it. But once I started recording the trades, I could see my strategy is not that bad, but it's just this little one thing that is not optimal. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And that's many things, um, many traders, they uh, 
have no way of uh, validating or checking that. So they're always in the system hopping mindset where they think, okay, my strategy is broken. I need a new strategy, but they don't look at, they only see their strategy as a way of finding entries, but they forget that the strategy is much more than just entries. It's how you set stops, how you manage targets, how you scale in and out and everything that, and that you can only find out through good record keeping, I think, yeah. Yeah, yeah, and this this is amazing. This is a very good lesson I have for myself. When I started to track stuff, it, it completely changed how I traded. And it kind of completely changed what I modified and the action I took after. Because you don't want to trade and then put the bad trade in your journal. After. Yeah, exactly. So you're more inclined to take the right trade, yeah. in my opinion, over time. Yeah, so how often do you go back in your journal and look at all the trades that are there? Um, so I open my journal the first thing in the morning before okay. I start my platform. And I just want to see what are my last three or five trades. And I don't even look at the outcome. I just want to see um, how did I execute them? Are there any main problems? Why are they on point? Or maybe I had some uh, some issues which are I, I revenge traded, I broke rule, or I was a little bit itchy and tried to get into a trade. Or also when I saw that I haven't had a trade for maybe one or two days, um, that is also a reminder, a reminder that it's not, um, it happens, but uh, yeah, you just need to wait then. So every morning I just make a quick check, but it's just like two or three minutes. I'm always a big proponent of doing some writing, about writing about how you feel and why you feel the way you feel. Not just how you feel, but why you feel the way you feel. That's a very important part of the, of the journaling of one's emotions. It's not just to identify your emotions, but try and be as honest as with, you, with yourself as you can as to why you feel this way and go as deep as you can. It depends. For one person, they could write three pages, but if it's very surface and they're not getting very deep, it won't be effective. Someone else could write a paragraph or two, but it's very deep. They're being vul very vulnerable with themselves, and that could be very effective. James Pennebaker, who's a psychologist down in Texas at the University, I think he was at the University of Texas. He might still be there. He's the guy who did the original empirical research on journaling for emotions and how it affects, um, improves symptoms of anxiety and depression among college students. So there's a lot of empirical evidence around it. There's other empirical evidence around just using words, attaching words to emotions and how that can help you to tolerate discomfort. But the journaling specifically, there's a lot of empirical evidence around that. Well, one of the biggest mistakes, not the, because there's a, lots of mistakes that people make with journals, but one of the common ones is that they never reread it again. You know, again, I'm not, I don't, there's not a specific structure. It depends on the particular situation, on the person and what they're going through. What I'm going to tell people what's more helpful is what was I thinking and feeling when the market did this and did that? What was I thinking and feeling when I did this and did that? What was I thinking and feeling after I did this and did that? That's the kind of journaling people should be doing. The idea that, you know, you often hear that plan the trade and trade the plan, which is great advice, but I would say that it's, 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 it kind of misses the mark and that um, if you are someone who has a hard time following your plan, it's not about continually changing your plan. It's, you need to kind of look at yourself. So I would just say that if you're someone who has a hard time following through with what you think you should do, then you owe it to yourself to either say, look, I'm going to deal with it, or I should stop trading. One of my mentors, he said, even though we had all the computer technology and all that stuff at that time, he said, Barry, what I want you to do now, and that, he was a rough, old, green beret, so he wouldn't say it there, he'd say, what you're going to do now is you're going to print out your charts at the end of every day, and you're going to mark them up the way I show you, and you're going to bring them to me every week. And I, his, uh, I said, um, Ray, I don't need to print out the charts. He was in his 80s, so I just figured he wasn't, you know, familiar with technology. I mean, he traded screens too, he's a screen trader, but... Uh, I said, really, you know, those days are over. I want to save a tree here. I can analyze my trading on the monitors, right? And he'd say, no, you cannot tell you, do what I tell you to do or get out of my life. Wow, get out of your life? <laughs> He's like, that's kind of harsh. But, you know, he was a great guy. Actually, we became great friends. And he actually stopped uh, charging me for mentoring even because he said, and he didn't use that quote, but he basically said, Barry, he said, you are the only student who does everything I tell them to do. And that was one of the examples. So I thought he was nuts, but I'm like, okay, I don't want to break this relationship. I want to keep being mentored by him. So 
I'd print out my dang charts every day in color and I'd mark them up. He showed me how to notate them and so forth according to his method. And then I'd have my stack and we traded together like once or twice a week and the rest of the time, you know, I trade at home and then we'd get together once a week at his girlfriend's house. He was in his 80s and his girlfriend was like 40. So he was quite a character. But um, anyway, oh, no, she was a trader too. She was a good trader. So um, then we'd go through the charts, print it out. And I gotta tell you, the old Kaju was right. There's something about printing out the charts on a piece of paper and analyzing them on paper instead of just on the monitor. Yeah. And that dramatically improved my trading. And then writing notes of, okay, here's the stuff I did wrong. So most people wouldn't print out their charts and do all of that. Yeah, it doesn't take anything. It requires no special skill or no anything, tools really, to do anything other than a nice notebook to keep your journal in um, because we believe in using writing to actually make that, you know, hand mind connection about what you're doing. So for instance, this morning I took a Euro dollar trade and I took it on a what I call an RBO range breakout. So I'll just write EU S S for short, let's say one, if it's my first trade on the Euro in the morning, S1 at, and I'll put the price real quick in my journal, short it, let's say 22. And then over to the right of that, I write RBO. So I know it was a range breakout. And then after the trade's done, I'm either stopped out, I either punch out or it hits my target. So then I book the, you know, write down the number of pips I either booked or I lost or broke even or whatever the result was, I write it down. A lot of times with Excel, because I do have some traders that like to automate and that's fine. You know, you have to do what works for you. But again, I believe in this writing it down because you it forces you to really not just type something in and kind of be emotionally removed from it. But when you write it down, there's a little bit more of, I don't know, just keeping you honest about what you're doing, um, slowing yourself down emotionally and saying, oh, I took this. And also when you go over it at the end too, you can, I write notes sometimes like today was, you know, today was a great trading day. Price moved really quickly. We were in and out of the market. Most of us in 45 minutes, we don't get days like this often. I'll make notes to myself in the journal versus just typing it on some spreadsheet. Now, what I do do, I do use Excel for one thing, and that is I use my trade journal. I write everything. I write the daily total at the top of the page. And I take those each day of the week that I trade and I summarize and I put out on Twitter, usually on Thursday, because Thursday is my last day of trading for the week. I'll say I made, you know, XYZ pips today and I ended the week positive with 200 pips. And then I'll put up into Excel, I put in the weekly total. So I keep it running total so I can compare 2016 with this year, 2017. And it's really interesting because what I'm finding this year in particular, and this is where the value comes in maybe with using a spreadsheet, is that I can see instantly that the market dynamics conditions this year have changed dramatically. They've gotten more compressed. There's not as much volatility. The news isn't as surprising as we think it would be given the global uncertainty and all that. So when I look at this, I go, wow, 2017, I was, you know, there was so much price action, so much volatility. And this year, it's like tight, real tight, which has, you know, changed how we would prep what I call press trades during day trading, which means we would go for a couple targets versus now it's like get to a target and book your profits. 